2000's Shimon the Curse 2 is a continuation of the first movie where we watch as the rest of Kyoko's story plays out, and more people fall into the hands of the Seiki family. Now let's talk about it. So for starters, this movie opens with a recap. This should come as no surprise, it's not exactly uncommon for a movie or show to do this. However, literally 31 minutes of the first 33 minutes of this 74 minute movie is made up of the Kayako and Kyoko segments from the first movie, leaving us with about 44 minutes of original content. The recap wasn't painful to set through by any means, however, if you're watching these movies back to back, you're probably going to want to skip half an hour into it. And before moving on, I suppose I should also add for anyone wondering, you could skip the first movie and jump straight into this one, though I'd recommend watching the first one in its entirety. Now as for the new content, we watch as Kyoko, yet another victim, goes to check on her nephew, but ends up getting killed by the ghost of Takeo. I should have known she wasn't going to be our final girl, but with the last movie ending on a cliffhanger with her, I really thought the rest of this movie was going to be about her, maybe even putting an end to the curse or something, but nope. It's not a con, just uh, wasn't really what I was expecting, not that it's a bad thing, just Eh. We then watch as Kyoko's brother and their parents get cursed and killed off. I liked what we got with the brother. I thought the stuff we got with him and the possessed woman in the Sakai house was really cool. As for the parents though, <sighs> when the dad looked into the other room and saw Toshio's little meowing face smushed up between some floorboards, I just laughed. I thought it was funny. And that's coming from someone who thought Toshio was pretty creepy in the first one. Once all Kyoko's family is killed off, we get three more segments. The Investigator, the Boy, and the Off-Screener. Not what they're called, but we're calling it that. The Investigator segment, so I'm talking with a colleague about the missing people and deaths. And after going back to the department, he's informed that the woman in the photo he's looking at has came to see him. That woman, however, is Kayako. We see him enter his office, he runs out screaming, the male and female colleague rush into the office, and we watch as the Investigator gets jump scared to death by Kayako. The boy segment sees a boy staring at a window in class, only to get jumped and ambushed by an army of Kayakos. The segment is literally just a chase scene that lasts maybe a minute or two, but hey, at least it gave us some really cool visuals, like the crowd of Kayakos outside, or the swarm of them clawing at the windows. Finally, we got the off-screener. This segment is maybe a minute or two as well, and it, uh, is just the most pointless. Considering there's no Jew on the Curse 3, and these two unknown women weren't in the movie until now, I mean, what was the point of including this? It's just two chicks, they're talking, ha ha ha, I am nervous. They there is old lady nearby outside. Haha, ha, don't worry. Toshio meows. She's like, whoa, what, is there a noise? Kaiko makes her noise in the credits. It was just extremely pointless. I mean, the boy one too had a sense of pointlessness to it, but I was pretty sure that was the boy from Kyoko's family, so it's whatever. This one though is just two random chicks just dying. It wouldn't even be that bad if we saw the thing, but it's just a shot of the outside of the house. I definitely didn't have a bad time with this, however I do wish we got a lot more new content. I get these are made for TV movies that came out a couple weeks apart, so I understand why you'd include a recap, but 31 minutes of a 75 minute movie? Maybe if this is your first Juon film, specifically of the two Curse movies, it'll be alright. But as someone who watched the first, I really didn't need to rewatch the last half of the movie again. My only other con I have, which I personally didn't really mind, was there wasn't as big of a sense of dread. Not like there was in the first one. The first one had moments that kept you on the edge of your seat, just waiting for something to happen. Whereas in this, something just felt lacking. Toshio's face in the floor wasn't spooky, the possessed woman lifting her head to reveal it was Kaiko was expected, the whole school segment wasn't anywhere near creepy. It's cool though. I still had a fun enough time with it though. The school segment might not have been creepy, but I thought it was a lot of fun. The possessed woman revealing herself to be Kayako may be expected, but still cool. I did like this movie, especially the earlier part with Kyoko, when I thought she'd be the main character. But even after that, I still had a really fun time. Though I don't have anything positive to say about the final segment with the girls. Unless I'm missing something, that was just the shortest, most pointless scene in the entire movie. It was just a shot of the outside of the house as two girls go, oh, do you hear a noise? Meow. Err. Credits roll. Well anyway, in the end, I'd rate 2000's Jew on the Curse 2 a 7 out of 10. Yes, the opening recap will likely be an issue for some, but looking past that, what we get here is still enjoyable. Maybe not as great as the first movie, or first part, however you want to think of it, but it's still a really entertaining watch, even if it really should have just been tacked on to the end of the first. If you've seen this movie, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it down in the comments below. Thank you for watching, I'll catch you next time. Have a nice day. Looking for more horror fun? You're goddamn right. Then check out the VHS comic book series, a parody of the horror genre that follows the lives of three teens as they fight to survive a horror movie where every day is loaded with blood, boobs, and buds. The first two issues can be found in the description below. I was obsessed with the